Motivational Summaries presents to you the summary audiobook, Smart Brevity, The Power of Saying More with Less, written by Jim Vandehy, Mike Allen, and Roy Schwartz. Section 1 of 3. What is Smart Brevity? The main idea of this section is, Smart Brevity is a better way to create, share, and consume information in the cluttered digital world. It's a formula for communication effectiveness. Smart brevity is all about being short, not shallow. You use strong words, shorter sentences, arresting headlines, and simple graphics to cut through the fog and get people to pay attention to what you're trying to say. Smart brevity is a systematic way to organize your ideas so they get noticed and ultimately remembered, maybe even acted upon. The reality is, you can't rally people around a strategy or an idea if they don't understand what you're saying or if they habitually zone out when you start speaking. To be influential, you need your messages to break through with crystal clarity. It may sound counterintuitive to say shorter is better, but the reality is in today's digital world, most people are crazy busy. Therefore, you need to repackage how you deliver information if you want to get noticed. Readers want to know what's new and why it matters to them. You need to give people that quickly and accept that most people will skim most of what you communicate rather than savoring every word. Give people what they want or lose them forever. The great thing about smart brevity is following this template will clean up what you write. It will frame your ideas in the most influential way available. Or put another way, when you communicate the smart brevity way, you'll come across as smarter, better organized, and more effective than those who waffle on endlessly. Smart brevity in written form has four main or core parts that are always included. Grab them with a headline, state one big thing, explain why it matters, and options to go deeper. 1. You have a muscular tease or headline which will give people a reason to stop scanning something else and pay attention. This needs to be six or fewer strong words. 2. You need one strong first sentence or lead which states your big idea memorably and directly. This has to be short, sharp, and focused. 3. You need some context to explain why this matters. Context is important because most people are too ashamed or afraid to admit what they don't know. Spell out why your idea matters. 4. You also need to provide options for people who want to know more to learn more, and then make certain that what follows is truly worth their time. Do all of this on one screen of your phone, and you have created a smart brevity-style communication. Smart brevity came about as a result of the web offering something traditional newspapers and magazines never did, actual data on who was reading what. When that data was analyzed in the light of the day, it highlighted that most people tend to read the headline and then the first few paragraphs of any articles they see. They won't go through and read an entire article unless you hook their interest right up front and then give them the option to learn more later on if this is important to them. The Smart Brevity Formula is designed to make news and information not just smart, but as clean and efficient as possible. If you want people to pay attention to what you're saying today, get rid of the gimmicks and noise like autoplay videos, pop-ups, and long blobs of text. Instead, tell people what's new right in your headline, lead with your best idea, provide context, explain why it matters, and then give people options if they want to learn more. This is a great way to capture attention. Smart brevity works because it puts your audience first. You should visualize the person you're trying to reach and communicate one-to-one -one with them. Imagine a smart, curious person who is busy. He or she really wants to get what you're trying to say, but they need you to respect their time and intelligence. Therefore, say what you want to say in a taut, vivid, and memorable way. Get your key point across and then stop. That's smart brevity in action. Jim Vandehei says, We hide the good stuff in piles of words. We make people deduce what we're trying to say instead of just blurting it out. Don't be fancy. Be effective. To excel at smart brevity, 1. 
Focus on one person you're targeting and plan out the one thing you want them to remember. If you don't know this, your reader won't either. 2. Always write like a human for humans, and therefore be simple, clear, and direct. Authenticity and relatability trump telling people things they already know or explaining the obvious. 3. Put across one key idea and then stop. This is definitely a less is more moment. Shorten what you want to say to 12 words or less, use strong and memorable words, and then stop babbling on. People will thank you for doing that. Jim Vandehei says, You will be a much better communicator when you learn to sharpen your thoughts and ideas, package them to pop, and stop blowing words in time. Tightly tailor your message to your target reader. You're listening to the summary of the book, Smart Brevity by Jim Vandehei. Summary from Summaries.com Section 2 of 3 How to Do Smart Brevity Here's the main idea of this section. The basic smart brevity template is 1. Be worthy of their time 2. Grab them with a headline 3. State one big thing 4. Explain why it matters 5. Options to go deeper 6. Use just the right words and 7. Include visuals Jim Vandehei says, Smart brevity jams essential information into the most digestible and delicious packaging. Jim Van Hei also says, Think of everything you write like a New York Times headline. You want to be accurate, yet provocative, or newsy enough to pull in a reader. This is why headlines are in larger, darker fonts on websites and newspapers. They are the decision point. Your headline, or in an email, your subject line, is the Hey, Listen! of Smart Brevity. There's a foolproof way to know if you have a good attention grabber. Would you read it if you hadn't written it? 1. Be worthy of their time. Job number one in applying smart brevity is to make sure what you're saying is worth saying and that you're not wasting the time of your reader. Respect people's time and intelligence. Get right to the point rather than forcing people to wade through preamble and fluff. Specifically, 1. Make a list of the points you want to make and rank that list in order of importance. Be aware the first point is the one most likely to stick, so make it count. 2. Whittle your list down to just one or two key points and write them as bullet points rather than blobs of text. Pick your most important points definitively and aggressively. 3. Do a gut check. Ask whether that point is really essential at the expense of everything else. 4. Do a style check. Ask whether there is a simpler, cleaner way to convey the same information. 5. Delete, delete, delete. Look through your sentences and paragraphs word by word and ask what can you skip to save people time. Jim Vandehei says, Less is more and a gift. Do these things and people will stop rolling their eyes or ignoring you when you present them with a new idea or message. They will start to welcome your ideas and hear them loudly and clearly. Chris Saka, a venture capitalist, says, Write your business email or letter. Then, when you've written the whole thing, go back and make the first two to three sentences say all of what you wrote below. It's often the only part that gets read. 2. Grab them with a headline. Your subject line headline, or sometimes the first line of your message, is the most important. You've got to get people to stop scrolling and pay attention. Make sure your first sentence or headline grabs people, entices them, and ultimately seduces them. The human brain is wired to make a clear and quick yes or no decision whenever you read something. Most people will decide whether to read more or not based on the first six words in your headline. Make sure you have a headline that entices right from the get-go. To achieve this, 1. Start by stopping, using too many words in a headline, six words, tops, and don't try to be clever. It just confuses. Get right to the point. 2. Then start some better new habits. Like in 10 words or less, write the reason why you're even bothering to write your article. Express your main idea in a provocative yet accurate way. Use short, strong words that zing and sprinkle with active verbs. 3. Read your headline out loud to yourself to confirm it sounds like something you want or need to know more about. 
If it doesn't reach this standard, try again. Think of everything you write like it's a New York Times article. You want a great headline that appeals to a reader who was scanning the newspaper. Your headline has to generate a listen-up reaction. You have to signal you have something interesting to say, which is worthy of their time. Jim Vandehei says, If you start with, low-waste economy hits its groove, you've lost me. But, startups mining cash from trash, now you've got me. You would never cook a gourmet meal and serve it in a dog bowl. That's basically what you're doing when you try to get someone to pay attention to a well-crafted thought, but lose or confuse them with your teaser. 3. State one big thing. The first sentence of your article after the headline should be the one thing you want people to know. State your most important point in one sentence. Do this because in reality, this is about all your readers will be able to recall. Make sure you lead with your most important idea. A good way to come up with this is to imagine you're speaking with someone you really like. Tell them what has just happened or the idea that has just come to you. You wouldn't beat around the bush. You'd cut right to the chase and talk about what's most interesting. This should be your first sentence. For example, take this lead. President Joe Biden is relying on longtime advisors to guide him through tough foreign policy and domestic crises, and some Democrats worry that this limited group might be complicating his decision-making process. Yawn. A much more dynamic lead would be, Joe Biden is running the White House like his nemesis George W. Bush did, a small, secretive, like-minded oligarchy. Now that's interesting. Try to, one, boil down your most important point into one interesting and definitive statement. Two, skip the anecdotes and the adverbs, weak words, or extraneous words. Cut to the chase. Be direct, succinct, and clear. One sentence. That's it. 3. Always ask one critical question. If this is the only thing they remember, is it exactly what you want to stick? If you answer yes, you've got it right. If you answer no, rework it and try again. Jim Vandehei says, Bad. I know you are busy and have so much on your plate, but I was hoping to let you know that I am throwing a party and hoping to get a live band to play at it and might need your help in pulling some stuff together. Good. I'm throwing an epic bash with a live band. 4. Explain why it matters. When you put why it matters right into your article, you put your ideas into a digestible context. Most people are busy and will skim your article. When they see why it matters, they will pause. Tell them this in a brisk, clear way, and they will then decide whether to read the rest of your article or not. Doing this is like a street sign. You don't have to use why it matters if you prefer not to. Other alternatives are the big picture, what's next, what we're watching, between the lines, the backstory, catch up quick, zoom in, zoom out. To use these axioms, derived from axios, the Greek word for worthy, effectively, some suggestions are 1. Always bold why it matters or other axiom because people are crazy busy. They yearn for context. Scratch that itch for your reader. 2. After you state why it matters, explain in one sentence why the information in your first sentence is important, whether something will change, a new trend is building, or relevance to something else. 3. Make your sentence about why it matters direct and declarative, adding to your opening thought. You've succeeded when people want more because what you say is riveting. Jim Vanderhei says, Now read all three parts together, your headline, your first sentence lead, and your axiom. If this is all a person hears and learns, does it convey what matters most to you in the most blunt and understandable way possible? If the answer is yes, you have done more in 200 words than most people do with 20,000. 5. Options to go deeper the whole aim of smart brevity is to jam essential information into digestible and appealing packaging. To deliver depth and detail, you want to give the reader the option to go deeper if they want to. That way you can link to other content without making your own article too long and unreadable. Jim Vandehei says, here's a secret. Most won't. 
but simply seeing the go deeper material shows the reader that you're on their side, that you want to make it easy for them to learn as much as they want, and it also shows thoroughness and consideration on your part. It says, I've done the work so you don't have to. Ending your article with go deeper links keeps your own item efficient and elegant. To make this work, one, use axioms to provide signposts and structure, go deeper, the big picture, and learn more, all work impressively well. Two, use lots of bullets to break up clumps of text. People will skim bullets, so if you're explaining three or more ideas or data points, use bullets. Three, bold your axioms to make them stand out and scream, pay attention to this. Make each paragraph no longer than two or three sentences and add bullets, charts, and axioms to break up the flow. Four, know when to stop. Be zen-like about trying to say more with less. Most people over-talk or overwrite because they love their subject. Don't be that person. State your facts and stop blathering on. Jim Vandehei says, Never forget, most people tune out after a few dozen words and skim, at best, the rest. Ending your item with go deeper is efficient and elegant, and shows your reader that smart brevity doesn't come at the expense of nuance or context. Imagine all the time you will save others, and yourself, for more meaningful activities. This should be your North Star. 6. Use just the right words. Another key aspect of smart brevity is to use strong words rather than weak words. Strong words are vivid and precise, whereas weak words are abstract. Strong words describe something you can see, touch, taste, or take a picture of. Jim Vandehei says, An old city editor once pointed out to us that you'd never call a banana an elongated yellow fruit. Yet when we're writing, we do this all the time. Don't say price point if you mean price. Don't say core competency if you mean skill. Smart, taut writing is linear, not twisty. Subject, verb, object. This is really pretty simple. 1. Always deploy strong words, those which are vivid, precise, and easy to visualize. Weak words are abstract, strong words are concrete and real. 2. Purge weak words, which tend to be multisyllable like prevaricate, paradox, disconcerting, etc. Don't say vicissitude, say change. Replace ubiquitous with everywhere. Use strong words. 3. Avoid foggy words as well, like could, may, might, etc. Almost anything may happen. Instead, say what is happening. Be definitive. 4. Embrace short, crisp, and punchy phrases like revenue boomed, cubs lost, or I quit. Strong phrases like these are great. 5. Use active verbs to inject action and movement into your writing. Passive verbs are wishy-washy. For example, the situation in Afghanistan continues to deteriorate from a security perspective. Replace with active alternatives. The Taliban have retaken Afghanistan. 7. Include visuals. As strange as it may sound, emojis are great tools for smart brevity. They may have started life as the domain of kids and jokes, but emojis are in fact brilliant for conveying emotion, intent, and even nuance. Jim Vandehei says, Emojis are a powerful tool for business and casual communication when used wisely, cleverly, and most important, with restraint. Use them too much and you look silly. But inserted at the right moment, they help instantly signal the tone or topic of an item, saving you and the reader time by getting them in the right headspace. Please note that using emojis is digital art more than science. The fact is, emojis have gone mainstream, with people naturally equating a shopping cart emoji with Walmart and a warning light emoji with breaking news. That's their superpower. Emojis say more with less, which very much aligns with the smart brevity ethos. Jim Vandehei says, An emoji in a subject line will make it instantly stand out in your inbox. Try it, and you'll quickly see the effect. Remember, you are in a war for attention, so every trick counts. Remember also the aim of smart brevity is to position yourself as a trustworthy source of information. 
experts stand out because they understand the underlying issues and can distill their know-how in accurate and interesting ways. Smart brevity is ideal for that. Be the expert or find one. The other great attribute of smart brevity is when you speak this way, you can communicate the full spectrum of human emotions. Smart brevity allows you to present your message in a style that's familiar yet conversational. Being frugal with your words allows people to access your expert knowledge in realistic time frames. Making things clear and simple is a great superpower to have. It's a good idea to always go through a simple checklist whenever and wherever you use smart brevity. Am I using a headline which is clear yet conversational and six words or less? Have I put my one big idea into a single sentence? Does my lead, my first sentence, draw people in and make them want more? Am I explaining the context well, why this matters? Do I use some unique axioms that set me apart and project my voice? Am I incorporating the right details and nuance into what I'm writing here? Is my material cohesive and does it flow? Is there a sense of my voice and personality in what I've written? Do I come across as sharp, efficient, and authentic rather than curt? You are listening to the summary of the book, Smart Brevity, written by Jim Vandehei, Mike Allen, and Roy Schwartz. Summary brought to you by Summaries.com. Section 3 of 3. Smart Brevity in Action. Here's the main idea of this section. Smart brevity can and should be used in all your communications, whatever the format. It can be used at work, in your speeches and meetings, in your emails and social media, everywhere. If you're looking to get ahead of the game, run your company on smart brevity. This is an all-inclusive way to communicate ideas and more. 1. Smart brevity your newsletters. Jim Vandehei says, There is no better way to communicate multiple things of importance and get people to pay attention than a smart, zippy newsletter, all in smart brevity. In today's workplace, people will ignore reports, hate memos, and blatantly state they didn't get your email, but they will love getting a newsletter if you do it in smart brevity format. It's a great way to make a difference and to get everyone on the same page. To have a newsletter that rocks... 1. Come up with a catchy one- or two-word name for your newsletter, which is punchy but at the same time conveys your ethos and purpose. 2. Don't waste people's time. Signal right up front how long it will take to read, based on the average person being able to read 265 words a minute. State how many words and how long to read. 3. Go big. Make the first item in each newsletter one big thing, blank and put the most important thing right at the front. 4. Be tidy. Use one font, one text size, bullet points, and graphics. Make your newsletter pleasing to the eye, because it's uncluttered and not just a big blob of text. 5. Put the smart in your brevity. Select just a few more items in order of importance. Make sure every single item you discuss is genuinely essential reading. Remember, people will probably only read the first two items and scan the rest. 6. Aim for 5 to 10 items max. Anything longer is a book. Trim to less than 1,000 words in total, with each item being 200 words or less. Brevity always. Include go deeper links. 7. Aim to make the reader smile or get excited and try to end with something funny or personal. Leave a good taste in their minds. 8. Include simple graphics or pictures, with pictures which need no words being the gold standard. 9. Never lose sight of the fact you're the boss, so curate items for your readers that are vital to know. Signal what matters most because you've mastered the content. 10. Gamify it. Trim words, and then challenge someone to try and figure out what's missing. They won't be able to do it. Brevity always wins. 2. Smart Brevity Your Workplace The era of having a boss hunkered down in head office and ordering minions around is over. Today's employees are idealistic and demand transparency and meaning at work. Being able to communicate in smart brevity will position you to thrive. 
you'll be able to communicate authentically and persuasively. To make that happen, 1. Write all your messages, emails, memos, and updates in Smart Brevity. People will appreciate the uniformity and uniqueness. 2. Encourage everyone who reports to you to do the same. Make it a company-wide practice. Smart Brevity is contagious and learnable. 3. Use Smart Brevity in all internal presentations and PowerPoints. Start with a slide articulating your one big idea, and then make one point on each subsequent slide. Use clean and simple graphics. Boil everything down to single sentences, 20 words or less. And limit your entire presentation to five or six slides, max. End where you began with one big idea. 4. Always communicate inclusively. Write in plain language, use bullet points to break up text, and keep it simple. Length loses people. 5. Look for ways to run your entire company on smart brevity. It can be done. Axios has more than 500 hyper-ambitious people, and they all use smart brevity to communicate with candor and authenticity. Audience first. If you're the CEO and you need a way to get people aligned with your mission and values, smart brevity is your greatest ally. Consider writing an employee newsletter every Friday in smart brevity format. 1. Include information about why it matters to keep people heading in the right direction. It's almost impossible to talk about your mission too often. 2. Tell an authentic story about how you're making a difference in the lives of customers. 3. Write about five big things each week so everyone knows what their priorities are. 4. Write with candor and transparency, essential ideas rather than corporate nonsense. 5. Don't quit. Communicate with your people once a week like clockwork. 6. Be humble. Express appreciation for your team and, if possible, poke fun at yourself. Admit to mistakes. That frees everyone else to fess up. 7. Actively encourage copycats. Get other leaders to communicate smart brevity style as well. 3. Smart brevity your email. Gallup did a survey and found 70% of employees want shorter communications at work. News alert! Of course they do, especially when you consider the average business user today gets on average 126 emails every day, compared to less than 50 emails a day just a few years ago. Fortunately, Smart Brevity works incredibly well for emails. Some ideas. 1. Start every email with a short, direct, and urgent subject line, not something lame. Tell people why they need to open this email now. 2. Put your ask or your key piece of information in the first sentence always. Make people feel like they have to read on. 3. Always add some context. Include why it matters. Use a consistent style which becomes a replicable framework. People will look for it once they know it's always going to be there. 4. Add bullets. Make it easy for people to skim your email. That's what they're going to do anyway, so help them. 5. Bold keywords and figures. Anything you want to stand out to the reader. 6. Include some clean and intuitive visuals to help amplify or give life to important points. Jim Vandehei says... The way most people write email screams, blow me off. But you can entice more people to read your work faster or skim more effectively if you smart brevity it before hitting send. 4. Smart brevity your meetings. The smart brevity principles apply equally well to meetings. To make your meetings better, 1. Decide whether you genuinely need to meet or whether everything could be handled better as a one-on-one -on -one chat. 2. Set a time limit whenever you organize a meeting. 20 minutes is usually sufficient. Test whether 5-10 to 10 minute micro-meetings will work as well. 3. Open the meeting with a headline, the one-sentence objective circulated in advance. 4. Next, explain why it matters so everyone has good context. Let everyone know why they are in the room and what they contribute. 5. State clearly and concisely what specific decisions need to be made so everyone is focused on making those decisions and ending the meeting. 6. Have quick and inclusive discussion, and if someone goes off topic, point that out with a smile. 7. 
When two minutes are left, bring the discussion to an end by summarizing the meeting takeaways and getting specific about next steps. 8. End on time, and then send out a follow-up email with bullet points detailing who will be responsible for each follow-up action. Jim Van Dehei says, The person calling the meeting should be responsible for setting an objective, one direct sentence, an agenda, three bullet points max, in an email before the meeting. Try to do this the night before in case some participants are booked solid on the day of. It gives ample time to think. Six smart sentences will suffice. Jim Van de Heij also says, A good meeting is usually determined before it starts. 5. Smart brevity or speeches Smart brevity is superb for hitting the sweet spot in giving a speech. If you want to give a great speech, some practical tips that work are 1. Win before you begin. Prepare to speak authentically, human to human. Forget about PowerPoints, notes, and teleprompters. They're bad crutches. Get people to focus on you. 2. Aim to get the audience to remember one point or lesson. That's it. Write down word for word what your big thought is in 15 words or less. If you don't know what this is, your audience certainly won't. 3. Hit your audience with your point by directly stating, The one thing I want you to remember from my speech is... State it cleanly and directly. 4. Always explain why it matters to your audience. Provide context and why they should pay attention to what you're saying. 5. Bring your big thought to life by using interesting stats, great stories, and memorable quotes. It pays to number your points so you have verbal bullet points in your speech. 6. Reinforce your big thought at the end by directly stating, Remember, if there is one thing you take away, then say thank you and end graciously. TED Talks are perfect to learn from. They're 18 minutes long. Social networking guru Pamela Meyer gave a great TED Talk in 2011. She began with, I don't want to alarm anybody in this room, but it's just come to my attention that the person to your right is a liar. Ever since I wrote this book, Lie Spotting, no one wants to meet me in person anymore. No, 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 no. They say, it's okay, we'll email you. So before I get started, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clarify my goal to you. Lying is a cooperative act. Its power emerges when someone else agrees to believe the lie. That's smart brevity in action and a perfect speech model to follow. 6. Smart Brevity Your Presentations The key to giving a great presentation, the smart brevity way, is to simplify to exaggerate. Plan on having fewer visuals and using less words. Delete anything and everything that distracts from essential points. Instead, 1. Write down your ask or outcome in six words or less, and then the three to five points you must make. Two, develop one slide for each point and your overall outcome. On the basis, each slide is a billboard. Make people get the point immediately for each slide. Use minimal and preferably no text. Three, use pictures to tell a vivid story because people always remember arresting images. They get burned into the listener's brain without them even noticing it. Piggyback your message on great visuals. 4. Keep it short. Use way less visuals than you might be inclined to use. A good rule of thumb is for every 20 slides you want to put in your deck, use just two. People will process a presentation best if it has one big idea backed by three to five points. That's it. 5. Just like a salesperson, always be closing. Make your big thought the first thing people hear and the last thing they hear and see. Leave your big thought lingering in the air at the end of your presentation. Jim Van de Heij says, So many presentations are stressful for the presenter, boring for the audience, and a waste of time for both. Fewer words, images, transitions, and sounds will all make your presentation sharper and more memorable. You can talk, you can use slides, you can show pretty pictures. None of it matters if you don't have a crystal clear idea of what you want the audience to remember. 7. Smart Brevity Your Social Media The efficient cleanliness of smart brevity can make all your social media posts pop amid all the normal clutter and noise. 
you're much more likely to get a click or share if you say less. Jim Vandehei says, Social media is the hand-to-hand -hand combat of attention warfare. There's no more Darwinian setting in communications than when you're scrolling a social feed. In an email, you have a few seconds to grab someone's attention. On Twitter or Instagram, it's the blink of an eye. To excel at social media, one, know your audience, and pick simple, arresting images which you know will appeal. Twitter loves urgency and facts. Instagram is all about images with minimal text. Facebook thrives on provocative ideas and announcements. Align with what each platform values the most. 2. Always write smart brevity style. Headline, one big idea, context, options to go deeper. Rinse and repeat, and include emojis that make sense. 3. Use infographics, so you can tell complicated stories in as close to zero words as feasible. Prepare graphics that people can glance at and know exactly what you're trying to say. Jim Vandehei says, On social media, you're only going to tell them that one thing. Tease them with a newsy nugget. Provoke them with a surprising quote. Wow them with a memorable data point. If you're giving the reader something, they're more likely to engage with your content and the algorithms will begin to reward you. 8. Smart Brevity Your Visuals Smart brevity works because it provides a predictable and consistent hierarchy. You have a headline, one big idea, context, and options to go deeper. Similarly, for your visuals, use clean, sharp images which relate directly to your big idea. To achieve smart brevity in visuals, one, start with a strong concept, which will grab people immediately. This will usually be something uncluttered. Two, Edit out superfluous elements, so you're left with something worth seeing and noticing. 3. Be direct, and always look at it from the perspective of the person you're trying to reach. Judge your work solely from their perspective. 4. Create a visual hierarchy. Make your most important visual clue something which will catch the eye of the reader. You then offer visual context in color, depth, or visual setting. 5. Always respect your audience by avoiding abstraction, clutter, and confusion. Jim Vandehei, Mike Allen, and Roy Schwartz sum up, If you're not communicating inclusively, you're not communicating effectively. The principles of smart brevity can help bridge differences in background and abilities. It's direct and stripped down, accessible, and non-divisive by design. You have been listening to the summary of Smart Brevity, The Power of Saying More with Less, written by Jim Vandehei, Mike Allen, and Roy Schwartz.